Hi. If you're watching this movie, I may already be dead. Or at least held hostage. I've been kidnapped by a, a group of uh, rogue and uh, deranged inflatable toys that are holding both me and my emotional support ventriloquist dummy, Mr. Puzzle, hostage. And this might be my last report. Uh, since I've been held here uh, in, in, in a, this inflatable toy prison, uh, I've managed to uh, 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 create this journal called The Inflatable Life, uh, uh, which I even had published by Anvil Press somehow while I was being held in inflatable uh, hell. Uh, so I'm going to read from my last journal. My Our time is running out, right, Russell? Well, I don't think so. Well, shut up. Okay, so here's a... Uh, it's really hairy here, I'm telling you. But let's begin with uh, this poem. No, let's begin with this one. No, let's begin with this one. The Bruised Sunset. The sunset is the same hue as the bruise Martin Xavier gave me in grade six, when he punched me in the face after I suggested he was a schmuck. Such is the power of suggestion and the power of a sunset in the distorted face of a recollected youth, a pain that reaches across years, stinging like jellyfish, inadvertent, unseen, undulating on the murky waters of memory, blind and muddied with shame, my shame and not the jellyfishes, because after all, it's just jelly and pulsating sacs and feeding tubes, and me, well, suffice to say, my knees were jelly, and I could only wish back then for the tentacles of death to strike back at every water fountain foe and gravel dusted playground enemy while I sought solace up in a tree, one eye tracing airplane vapor trails and bus and bugs navigating tree bark, while with the other I watched Martin Xavier beat up my friend beneath the tree. When he asked if I wanted to switch places after I voiced my concern, I just grinned sheepishly. All these years later, I'm still up in that tree, cowardly, trembling, always willing to sacrifice someone else so I can continue to enjoy the rustling leaves, the purity of poetry, and the smell of overdone barbecue meat wafting on the breeze. Okay, moving along, because I don't know how much time I have left before before. Well, they want to turn me into an inflatable toy, is what I think. Uh, this poem is called The Prodigal uh, Son Toupee. I don my prodigal son toupee and make my way to the penthouse suite, where the air smells of gardenias and liverwurst. Wallace Stevens wrote a poem about this once, before he took up... Sorry. Before he took up alligator wrestling and bricklaying in Tuscany. Rumor is he lost his left hand to a gator, but had a fake hand made that he kept in the second drawer of his office desk, on top of some life insurance policies. He wore it only for bowling with his cronies and decorating his grandchildren's birthday cakes. Happy birthday, goat boy! The cake reads, a windless night but still the scent from the handprints left on staplers and moldy plastic flowers steal you away from the canopies and lost luggage turning on a carousel in Fiji, even though you're in Saskatchewan, but can still feel your palms scraping together like palm fronds, speckled with post-it notes that read, don't forget, you're calling the bingo numbers tonight. Now I just stand around like a moon landing countdown, breath fading quickly as the time on a parking meter, words collapsing like a portrait of Bliss Carmen, tobogganing, and the ink pot empty, surrounded by turtles dreaming of hamburger meat, and a flat sea where darkness is bare-legged and sweating, and the earth below scrabbling and snuffling the, like the big snout of a heartless animal, stall-fed and murderous as the carpet-sweeping scars that crisscross its pudgy face. I don't know what Bliss Carbon tobogganing looks like, but I, I thought it would be unusual. I'm not even sure what Bliss Carbon looks like. I should look up a picture. Okay, here's a new, here's a poem I will, I will read, and it's, uh, I haven't read this one. How much time? I don't know. I don't know, Puzzle. We're running out, man. We're running out. I don't know. Well, I don't know. 
Tennis Lessons for the Homeless. It takes three ingredients to make a perfect beef stew. Beef, potatoes, and jaundice foraged from a faraway place where worn-out accordions wheeze in muddy graves. Where are the fingers that pine for those cracked yellowing keys, fluttering soundlessly over toothy grimaces and moss-covered mechanisms, cranking out the music of gnats? The roomy eye runs up against the rough underside of pale sunlight, and a haberdashery peeks from the depths of a pond, a sign advertising a sale on socks. Nearly 30 years past. I'm not quite as old as the casket I'm buried in, but it fits me like a glove, and I've been putting on weight. There's no one here anymore but the incessant pecking of tiny beaks. Did I say beaks? I meant gluten-free loaves of bread playing whack-a-mole on my head. I believe in the possibilities of ignorance. Butchers to bankers, Bibles to blimps, tennis lessons for the homeless and archaeological digs beneath the kitchen sink. There's no telling when the eyes rattling freight will become as deceitful as a bologna sandwich. Resting on a half-finished crossword, abandoned on the seat of a subway train. I glance down at 32 across. It wants a word for sneeze guards of Pompeii. But I'm already ahead of the game. Volcanic ash settling on the peak of my baseball cap, and I'm sure the crumpled paper bag that blows down the empty tunnel contains the tip of the tongue upon which that, fur that word firmly rests. I never know if it's bologna, 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 I don't know. I'll throw in one more poem, uh, just a quick one. Mr. Pussell, maybe you'll help me with that because we do, we've been working on, it might be our last act together, Mr. Pussell, because I, I don't know if we're going to make it out of here alive, or at least as humans or as a dummy, we might be inflatables by the time we're through. So a quick one. Uh, you want to help me? Uh, we'll do a ventriloquism act. It's called Boxcar Fred. Uh, uh, I'll throw my voice. Mr. Pussell is going to say the poem. Are you? Okay, let's just get to it. Books go, friend. The squirrels broke my hand. But it's a name I don't use anymore. A name from the dust bowl of history. The same dust bowl my bubba uses to cut my hair. Whilst the new moon wheezes overhead. That sucks. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I want a new ventriloquist. I'm tired of you. Okay. We're out of here. Uh, ignore Puzzle. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And, and uh, I feel they're getting closer. They're, they're just getting closer. i got to get the hell out of here. Thank you so much. And, and, and please, uh, if, if you'd see, buy a copy of the, the Inflatable Life uh, from Anvil Press, uh, because it, it, I may not be around to see if there'll be a, a collector's item. Okay. Good night. I'm going to go.